Hey everybody and welcome to the first video in a series that I'm well planning to make about plugins and plugin controls tutorials basically getting the max out of a plugin and I want to go through them one by one and really go into depth about all the controls on there and you know everything so i hope you all will enjoy this uh, my aim is not to make the regular tutorials that you'll see on, on youtube but really going a few steps further so with that being said let's get started with the universal audio fairchild limiter uh, bundle there's already a lot about that let's get started So the whole idea behind this tutorial series actually started um, because of the Fairchild Limiter Collection. I was reviewing them in uh, this video a few months ago, I think, by the time that this video goes live. What I noticed was that there are a lot of details involved in setting up a Fairchild compressor. And then I thought, wait a second, there are a lot of details generally involved in setting up plugins the correct way. Things like gaining, things like other details and settings and and those are usually things that people are not always aware about so yeah let's get started with this uh, with these ones because the fairchild limiter collection consists of two limiters we've got the 670 simulation and we've got the 660 simulation now you can look at this and say like hey this is the mono version of this one but that is only kind of true, because the 660 is a different sounding plugin from the 670. The controls are most of all the same on both. Um, of course, the 660 is lacking things like the um, linking of the channels, uh, left, right, left, third, uh, that kind of stuff, because it's a mono compressor. But it's sampled from a 660, which generally sounds different from a 670, if we look at the analog counterparts. I don't want to go very deep into the differences in sound between these two. That's something you can discover yourself. Uh, for me, this tutorial is more about optimizing the way of working with such a plugin. Therefore, I'm going to focus on the 670, but just be aware when using these plugins that there is a difference between the two. So first of all, there are a lot of controls on here, but let's start with the basics. And the first thing uh, which I already found interesting is the on-off switch on here. That doesn't just bypass the plugin, but it will also stop any processing and that will clear up your CPU to do something else. So if you're running out of processing, you can turn off the Fairchild this way. And this comes from the Universal Audio uh, DSP processing, of course, where you could, you know, clear up your DSP processing by turning off compressors. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the metering section. It's really interesting because you can check your uh, input level, gain reduction level and output level. However, Universal Audio is saying that the meters are not calibrated to input and output meters. They are not calibrated. So they say something about your signal, but also not a lot because Universal Audio is not really clear about the relative levels of these meters. Also, it gets more complicated when you're using the headroom control as well. So then it gets really complicated, but that's more for later. The input gain seems like a normal leveling knob. Like, hey, we can, we can level the input uh, in here in order to drive the compressor more or less. But what you have to be aware of is that this control is in the original hardware unit and also in the simulation. It's also simulated like that at, at the start of the compressor is literally this this gain knob which is an attenuator so it doesn't boost anything it just attenuates and it is really at the beginning of the compressor so that means that after that input gain there is all the tube stages and whatever uh, comes next so the higher this control and the higher the level inside of the compressor the more you are driving the amplification tubes so what could happen is that if you want to have less distortion or less saturation is that you want to drag down the input gain and turn up the threshold so that you're getting the same type of compression but usually a completely different sound so you have to think about the relation between these two controls like that the input gain is not just you know determining on, on where you want to put your threshold or what's comfortable for you it's, it's really determining the sound of the signal as well and here you can see that like now i am at, at a very low gain level and we almost have no harmonics we've got two 
harmonics which are probably not audible. However, if we now turn it up, let's turn it up to like 10, you'll see that the harmonics are getting more already. Of course, the level is also more, but the harmonics are even more. You can also see that that harmonic is getting louder. And if we turn it up even more, like we're getting more and more harmonics as well. So this is a very important uh, thing to be aware of. It's, it's not just simple like level. It's not just a calculation that's happening in the background. It's literally how the designers of the original Fairchild intended the level control to be. Now next up is the threshold. Now this compressor is of course a lot older and a lot different in control than you know usual plugins where you have all controls. This one doesn't have ratio, this one only has a threshold control. You can turn up the threshold and you'll see that there will be a point at which it will start compressing. Now there isn't really an optimal setting for the threshold, at least not as far as I could find. It's again really a play between the input gain and the threshold. And the threshold really determines the amount of compression that you want. Now there is another control that is influencing these settings and that is the headroom control. Because this plugin is modeled, you know, from an analog compressor but the gains are changed a little bit to comply with modern digital processing and standards. Because digital level, if you convert it to analog using the correct reference levels, um, is actually pretty high. So Universal Audio has adopted to that by using different gain levels internally. And with this headroom knob you're changing the internal levels and the internal uh, gain structure of this plugin. So what you can do when you drag this one down the internal signal will soften. You see that the compression changes. So when I drag it down the internal signal gets quieter. So we are going to need more gain or more threshold in order to achieve the same effect. And actually in this case we're really going to need more gain. Now if we turn this thing the other way around we're getting more internal signal. How you can see this best, this headroom setting is as an input and an output knob that you're just controlling so that you have better levels inside of the plugin. And this can really help you out sometimes uh, if you want to do some cleaner processing and your levels are already pretty high from what your DAW is giving the plugin or uh, when you want to crunch a little bit more, when you want to have a little bit more of that Fairchild warmth stuff. So those are the headroom and gain settings. And if we move a little bit further now, we're getting to the time constant settings, which is a different term for just saying attack and release. So the Fairchild you can set into different uh, modes, different presets for attack and release at the same time. That's also how the original unit works. And the interesting thing is that for position one to four, it's basically just fast, a little bit slower, a little bit slower, even slower. And when it comes to the attack, it's, it's a small difference. The attack is really quick from a Fairchild compressor. It's 200 microseconds, at least in this plugin. And the release time is 300 milliseconds. If you turn it up, we're going to 200 milliseconds attack time and 800 milliseconds release time. If we're turning it up again, the attack gets a little slower. 400 microseconds and two seconds release. And at setting four, we're getting at 800 microseconds and five seconds release. And yes, I had to look that up, yeah. But just so you know that these settings are really just kind of fixed settings because settings five and six are program dependent. So depending on the material that it receives, it changes its release time. So for five, the attack time is 200 microseconds and for six, the attack time is 400 microseconds. However, the release time for transients on five is two seconds and for multiple peaks or for more, you know, more continuous material, it's 10 seconds. It kind of has a leveler built in and then, you know, a different compression for peaks. Then position six, which is really like almost a broadcasting limiter setting when you need to handle a lot of different material. Uh, it has 300 milliseconds for um, quick transients. 10 seconds for material with a lot of peaks where it really sees that it's, it keeps going on and 25 seconds for consistent high program level, high music levels, high whatever levels. So when it really sees that it isn't going to end the high level, it's really going to stay in there for 25 seconds. And it's of course a release curve, so it will slowly recover. Now what I find interesting uh, about the attack times and about the attack shape is the balance setting as well, the small balance setting in here as well. Normally this is for balancing the tubes, but the effect really has something to do with the transients. So we've got we've got some music. Let's compress this. Like 
that. And now listen to those bass accents, the difference in transients. So let's take this one. And in the center. So when you turn it up, the transient comes through a little bit more. And it has to do with the fact that the balancing um, balances out the push-pull stage. If I'm saying it correctly. Um, and then the uh, shape of the waveform on one side uh, gets curved differently than on the other side. And that, that's, that's the effect that you're getting then, what you were just hearing. So when you're working with that balance knob, uh, be aware of those type of things. That's the thing that you're looking at. That's the thing that you're, you want to hear. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the left-right versus left-vert. So left-right is our normal, you know, left and right channel compression. Left-vert is basically mid-side. Lateral, vertical. So center, sides. So whenever it says let, you can read mid. And when it says vert, you can read side. Few things to be aware of. When you're switching to let vert, you can choose to unlink the side chain. And when you're unlinking the side chain, it really means that the audio uh, in the center gets processed on its own uh, threshold. So when the center signal reaches the threshold, it will start compressing, uh, while the side channels won't do that. It really unlinks um, that part. You can also unlink the controls so you can do more compression on the sides or more compression on the mids. Also be aware of the fact that uh, when you unlink the controls, that you're not touching the left or right uh, channel input gains anymore because these stay left Right, these are not becoming mid-side. So that can be a little bit confusing in the beginning. Uh, so let me turn it up a little bit for now. But with unlinked controls, I can now I can now really do mid-side compression. As you can see here, like I'm getting more compression on my mid. Let's turn that down a little bit, turn this up a little bit. And now I'm, I'm getting more mid signal. Now let's play with this a little bit. I can uh... mid side compression has something really magical to it sometimes. But just be aware that you can only like use the in out and um, threshold and time constants for this and that the input gain is still left right input gain now another thing to think about is that you can also use the led vert processing uh, with all the controls and the side chain linked because it will still process the mid channel through the left channel and the side channel through the right channel uh, and that can give a little bit of a difference in sound so it could be nice to just flip those switches a few times uh, when setting it up now this is basically the the normal like uh, Fairchild compressor uh, what you normally would get from a Fairchild compressor all the other things these controls are in the bottom were made by Universal Audio um, to make life easier. Now the first control that they've added is a sidechain filter. So what we can do with a sidechain filter, uh, which we can both use in left, right and left third mode, is uh, filter out the low frequencies from the sidechain. So that means that the compressor doesn't respond to low frequencies anymore. So we can literally filter the signal that it responds to. And if I've done this right, it will respond less to the bass. <laughs> to the bass. It can really help in, for instance, bass heavy music. Now there are two more controls here, left and right output. These are literally digital output gains. According to Universal Audio, there isn't a single thing that will happen to your sound compared to, uh, you know, using a fader in your DAW or something. And this is really for a gain management. So if you have a little bit of high gain, you can turn it down a bit. If you need more gain, you can turn it up a bit. It's just, you know, normal utilitarian things. Now there's also a mix knob in here for uh, parallel compression, uh, really cool. And you know, if you need to set that up manually, it's a lot more work. So I uh, highly appreciate that it's in there. Now the last setting that is in here, it's really interesting. It's the DC threshold. And 
this basically controls the slope of a compressor. Now it's really small in here, but I can show this. It's basically the knee setting. So you can see here, this is our compression curve. And if we set the Fairchild all the way down, we're getting a hard knee compression. Turning it all the way up, we're getting a soft knee compression. And what they did here, they, they put two um, presets in here. OWR, uh, which stands for Ocean Way Recording, which is the Fairchild that they sampled. And this is the default calibration that they're using it in. The Cal setting is the default uh, Fairchild calibration from the factory, basically. You can choose between uh, these two and it's really cool to experiment a little bit with this if you're setting this way all the way down so hard knee you're you're really getting some some brick wall action and uh, a soft knee can really you know have the signal glide into the compression a bit more it's quite interesting stuff to play with which i also advise to play with now apart from that there aren't any other settings to think about in this plugin there's already a lot to think about but th there's no oversampling and all that kind of stuff that is basically built into the universal audio plugin so that's really cool it's not something you have to think about and as far as i could measure i couldn't get it into aliasing distortion so that's all really really cool now i hope you learned something new today i hope you can now better set up your fairchild plugin the next time that you're going to use it I would say play around a little bit with these tips and tricks and uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this video and what you think of these tips so thanks a lot for watching again i'm going to make more of these tutorials if you all like it if you have any feedback uh, for me for these tutorials uh, you know things that i need to cover better or plugins that you want to see my tutorial about also Leave it in the comments down below and I'll put it on the list and, and, you know, produce a tutorial as quickly as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Keep pushing and bye bye.